Refraction is the bending of light rays as they pass from one medium into another. This common phenomenon is illustrated throughout the physical and natural world, such as in the apparent bending of a pencil in a glass of water or the displaced image of a fish in water. Although you can point to a fish underneath the water, you are pointing at an image, not the fish, unless you are directly over the fish. Refraction is also accompanied by a change in the velocity of the light wave. The ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum C to the speed of light in that medium V is called the index of refraction and is given by N equals C divided by V, where C is the vacuum speed of light or 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. The speed of light in the medium is also referred to as the phase velocity. One complication with respect to the refractive index is that it is wavelength dependent. This effect leads to chromatic dispersion or pulse spreading, and it is critical in understanding the performance of fiber optic systems. The refractive indices of some common media are given in Table 1. Note that the change of velocity in air is negligible and that most common glasses are between 1.45 and 1.51. This means that the light slows down to about two-thirds its vacuum speed in glass optical fiber. Semiconductors used in telecommunications usually have indices greater than three. In 1621, Willibrid Snell used the properties of various transparent materials to describe refraction mathematically. He observed the relationship between incident and refracted rays and assigned an index of refraction to each material he experimented with. This graphical representation shows refraction at the interface of two media given by N1 and N2, and then the relationship as determined by Snell's law is given by N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2, where theta 1 is the incident angle as measured from the normal to the interface, and theta 2 is the angle of the refracted ray as shown. A closer examination of Snell's law applied at the interface of two media reveals some important concepts regarding the refraction and reflection of light. The results for light traveling from a more dense into a less dense material, N1 greater than N2, are significantly different than the opposite case, N2 greater than N1. Let us determine what happens at the interface for the two possible conditions according to Snell's law. N2 greater than N1. Note that as the light enters a denser medium, as shown in figure 1-1, it tends to slow down and bend toward the normal. Light is transmitted and then refracted with an incidence angle from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. N1 greater than N2. Here light bends away from the normal and speeds up. At some incident critical angle, the refracted ray is at 90 degrees, and for incident angles greater than this critical angle, the light is entirely reflected. No light is transmitted into the second material. This result is quite different than the simple refraction case and forms the basis for propagation in optical fibers. The purpose of this experiment is to determine the refractive index of an acrylic plate using Snell's law. Measurements of the refractive angle for several different incident angles will be recorded and the material refractive index will be calculated. An average refractive index will be determined and the velocity of light in the material will also be calculated. For this experiment, you will need an acrylic block a laser mount, a helium neon laser, several sheets of white paper, a protractor, a ruler, and a meter stick. First you must adjust the height of the laser to about one inch above the table and mount the laser. Place a sheet of white paper on the table approximately centered below the beam path of the helium neon laser. Place the acrylic plate on the sheet of paper at an arbitrary angle around 45 degrees to the laser beam and align the height of the laser such that the beam passes through the center of the acrylic block. Without moving the paper or the block, trace the outline of the acrylic block.
mark two points along both input and output beams. Turn off the laser and remove the acrylic plate. Your paper should look similar to the work shown. Use the ruler to draw straight input and output lines. Use a protractor to construct a normal at the air acrylic interface and measure and mark incident and refracted angles. Your paper should now look like this. Determine the refractive index of the acrylic using Snell's Law and enter it in Table 2. Repeat steps 1 through 7 for two additional incident angles. Determine the speed of light in the medium, an average speed and average refractive index, and add this data to Table 2. As our experiment shows, refraction and Snell's Law can be demonstrated using relatively simple equipment. But what about that fish? Is that really just an image? Mother Nature and Snell's Law both tell us yes. The fish we see is not really there, but it is actually closer to us than it seems. We hope that through this experiment you have gained a better understanding of just how refraction works.